Alfonso Rivera. I'm the technical department manager for ELE International and I'm here in the UK uh, showing you guys our new uh, automatic consolidation apparatus. So we're going to do a test. I'm going to show you guys how, how essentially to do a one-dimensional consolidation test with our new automatic machine. The first thing we have to do is set up a sample. So we're going to cut a slice, use our knife to cut a slice off of the soil sample. And this has to be a slightly thicker than the Finishing up over here, but we want to cut us that slice and there we go. And we're, we have to try not to break it up too much, or at least leave it intact enough. Okay, so now we basically have to put our cutting ring in there and we're going to have to stab it in. This is a very hard soil sample, so we're, in that case. We're most likely going to use a hammer in a, in a, in a block of wood to, to make sure that stabs into place. start removing the pieces from it. Carefully cut up. So then usually a spatula, we're got, we have been scratching at the surface, making both surfaces nice and even with the with the edges of the mold. So basically we should have two flat edges perfectly in line or as perfectly in line as possible with the edges of the mold. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to weigh it. We have to record the weight of the cutting ring. And we're going to take note of that, 277 grams. We also would have weighed the cutting ring prior without the sample, which is 103 grams. And this is what we're going to put into the software. The next thing, the next step will be to assemble the the consolidator. So, first thing that goes in is going to be the bottom pour stone. The sample and the cutting ring are going to be assembled inside of the locking ring, which we're going to place carefully into the cell. Top pour split will go on top of the sample and we're going to lock, use the lock nuts. this point also we can grab some of the some of the trimmings and we can determine uh, moisture content off of the trimmings to use in the reporting. Finally we place the loading cap on top of the pour stone and that is our assembled sample ready, ready to go in. Our next step is going to be to mount the sample and set up the machine. So we're going to use the centering stud and center Replace our our fixed ring consolidators cell onto the uh, 
onto the machine. Uh, on the machine, we're going to go to the service functions and we're going to enter our passcode. And we're just going to do a couple of checks under the diagnostics and miscellaneous function. One of them is going to be the motor communications test just to make sure that our motor communications are okay and the machine says that they are. You don't have to do this step every single time. Uh, what I do want to do is I want to go into the input test and I want to def select the option, option to default to the test to start position. This will lower uh, or this will extend the machine down to, to its uh, maximum and then come down uh, a little bit, just enough to make sure that we're not going to hit any of the either upper or lower li limit switches on the machine. And this will take a couple of seconds. So what it, do, what it did there is it extended all the way to the, to the top and now it's just moving down a few millimeters to our start position. So from this position, we're gonna wanna adjust the height of our crosshead so that the loading screw is, is in imminent contact with the, with the loading cap. It's also a good idea to check the level of the crosshead. It appears to be pretty good. So like I said before, we're just going to have imminent contact. Once we've done this, we're going to lock our top nuts. And this would be the beginning position of the test. Aside from that, we're going to move the, the data bar for the trans transducer and ensure that it is in contact. And fix it into position as well. And we're going to go back to our main screen. You may notice a red error light on the screen. Or on the panel and this is an indicator for the user that the machine has been powered down and has to be set up or it has to be reset from the software uh, this is going to happen anytime that the machine is powered down and this is just to let the, the user know if there was a power failure in the middle of the test this is how you would know that that has happened the machine has recorded that okay our next step is going to be to start ds8 and the test so we're going to start the application DS8 is going to do a handshake with the automatic oscillation machine and here's a power failure warning we're going to reset it as we discussed before to eliminate the, the air light okay so now we're ready to start a test so we're going to move over to the new test option and we're going to load a test that's previously, information for a test that's previously been um, set up. Uh, otherwise, we'd run through each one of these menus, which we will anyways, and uh, we will be able to set up as needed. So we're going to load an import test setup, which is going to be an ASTM test. We're going to use our ELE demo machine. We're going to record or select the channel number two for it to be uh, the login channel selected. And it's an automatic consolidation test. The information has already been imported, so it's all 
populated into the into the test. So we're just going to move through. We're going to select the time as right now. So set the time to now option. Click OK. This is going to be a stiff clay. We are going to select the specimen stiffness uh, depending on the type of soil. So for this one, we're going to try to do a firm specimen stiffness. The information for the diameter or dimensions of the of the cutting ring as well as the uh, weights that we recorded has already been set up, but to, rec to, to review, our, our specimen ring weighs 103 grams, it's a 75 millimeter diameter and a 20 uh, millimeter height, and the sample weight plus the cell or the ring is 277 grams. We're going to use a natural content option, although if the specimen would have been uh, extracted from uh, below the water table, we would then probably want to select the inundated uh, specimen option, and then we would have to put water in the cell. But in this case, we're not, we're not going to do that. If it was the case that the specimen had the potential for swell, we would have performed a swell test previously and found out the swelling, press swelling pressure, and this would be entered in this uh, option here. Uh, in, in our case, we're not going to do that, not for this demonstration. So now we're going to move over to the next step, which is going to be to define our loading sequence. So the loading sequence has de several different uh, components. Uh, number one, the stage type, whether this is uh, going to be a seating, seating, loading, and or unloading stage. Uh, each one has to be selected and what level of pressure or normal load is going to be applied on the sample uh, and then how the stage is going to be completed. On this test we're going to um, we're going to use an automatic uh, stage completion so that means that for example in the test that we've set up uh, when we when the machine observes observes more than 20 microns or sorry less than 20 microns per hour is going to determine that the sample has consolidated fully and then it's going to automatically end the test stage and move on to the next uh, consolidation test stage which would be the next, next loading increment. What we're going to do here is we're going to set up a test um, delete some of these. We're going to start around 200 and we're going to add a few a few uh, stages so uh, automatically, each time that you add a new text sta the test stage, it, it copies the one before and it doubles the load. So uh, your loading increment ratio is going to be always a, a, a double in effect. So 400, we'll go to 800, maybe 1600. And then we can add a new one and select it to be an unloading stage if we want to. So it'll half it. Go from 1600 to, back to 800 and then to 400 and then to 200 and we can add a, a last one of it'll automatically have it to 100 kPa uh, in reality what I want to do is remove load and I'm going to remove the load back to the seating load of 5 kPa this will essentially bring us back to the beginning and would simulate the complete removal of load from the specimen uh, for of course the bouncing back the last stage always is going to be an end uh, uh, a type of end st stage type and this is just going to tell the machine to end the test automatically once it's completed. So we're going to move over to the next screen. We're going to move over to the next option. It gives us a quick review of the data that we've put in for this test, type of test, uh, etc. All of the information that we we've typed in before. Uh, the one thing that we want to check here is that the maximum pressure, really the, the maximum load uh, it, uh, for this, based on the sequence that we used, uh, which in this case is 3,395 newtons, is not higher than the maximum load capacity of 15,000 newtons, as you, as you see here. After that, we're going to start the test. And the machine is going to start uh, on my queue, 
is going to start uh, applying the seating load. So I'm going to click on start test stage and it'll move over to the position where the seating load has been applied and that would be our starting position for the test as a whole. The software is always going to tell us which stage it is on as you saw before. So now we're going to start with 200 kPa um, and this would be our, um, the beginning of the test complete. As you can see it's moved over and it's monitoring stage number one which is the loading stage of 200 kPa. The machine is going to move up uh, and to apply that load. If we, if we move over to the control test option, this will allow us to monitor the load application. So as you can see, this is essentially um, our deformation over time, which is going to be running for the next, uh, well, until it automatically consolidates and determines that, it, that's, that it's ready to move over to the next uh, to the next stage. Well, the different options that we can select here. We can also display, uh, you know, if we're doing time square root method, or we can also go into logarithmic time for the, uh, which at this point is, there's no real change because um, there's not enough data in there, but we'll monitor it over time. The machine is automatically going to adjust itself uh, to keep or maintain a load. What we see here is on the machine, um, this is essentially just monitoring the load and displacement. As you see, there are 200, 200 kPa applied. Uh, you may observe it the very here and there uh, as, it's, as the machine is adjusting uh, for positioning, although it's pretty stable. And, and mainly what, what is going to be really um, changing here over time or potentially a long period of time is going to be the the displacement or the deformation recorded which at this point is at one point sorry 0 0.147 millimeters um, of, of compression so at this point the machine is running the test automatically and it will run for as long as it needs to so what we're going to do is come back later and uh, monitor where it is for now Thank you very much and check our website.